Polygon has just released a improvement proposal, a Polygon improvement pro proposal, PIP, to upgrade their POS chain, their proof of stake chain, to be a ZK EVM Validium. So this would transform the chain from what it is currently, which is a side chain, to a Validium that is EVM compatible and powered by zero knowledge proofs. And this is a pretty big deal because Polygon's POS powers some of the top brands in the world in their Web3 initiatives. So we have companies like Nike, we have companies like Starbucks and Reddit, all using this Polygon POS infrastructure to power their NFT collections or their marketplaces. Whatever Web3 projects that these companies are creating is usually on Polygon POS. But before we dive into exactly what this proposal means for you as a user and and Polygon as the company, let's actually dive back into the history of why any of this is even required. Why are companies building these solutions on top of Ethereum? This all boils down to, and this is taken directly from Ethereum's docs, the need for scaling solutions to support Ethereum's uh, scalability issues, right? Because as an estimate, Ethereum can only handle roughly 15 transactions per second, which is pretty slow considering how often people are doing things like minting NFTs, transferring NFTs, sending each other Ethereum on the Ethereum network. This has led to a number of companies, including Polygon, to create scaling solutions to address this issue in Ethereum. This comes with a number of challenges, right? Because why wouldn't Ethereum just increase the scalability if they could do it themselves. The thing is, when you increase the scalability, you often have to sacrifice some other aspect of your chain that you're creating. And this is outlined in Ethereum's vision document outlining their scalability trilemma. And I know my head here is blocking the <laughs> third prong of this triangle, so I'll just zoom in. The bottom prong is scalability here. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. That's what the bottom bottom part here is. So I'll zoom back out. And the other two aspects of the scalability trilemma are security and decentralization. So what this means is in order to increase scalability, you might need to sacrifice some level of security or you might need to sacrifice some level of decentralization or you might need to have a secure and decentralized network that isn't scalable, which is kind of what Ethereum is right now. Where Polygon POS and other companies like Optimism and Arbitrum come in is they're sacrificing some part of the scalability trilemma to increase the throughput and decrease the transaction fees, which in the process is improving the scalability of the chain. This is why Ethereum doesn't just, you know, make it more scalable. It's not that simple. There needs to be some kind of sacrifice when you're improving the scalability of your chain. So the point of me talking about this is to kind of cover off the history of the innovations to address this scalability issue that Ethereum has. And the first one, which is what Polygon POS currently is, is a side chain. So when Polygon was created, it was one of the first kind of scalability solutions to Ethereum. And what it does is has way more throughput. It has way lower gas fees. So we're talking, you know, a couple of cents to mint an NFT or a couple of cents to transfer funds from one wallet to another compared to Ethereum mainnets, you know, anywhere between 60 to $600 per transaction, which is just really unacceptable in any kind of scalability sense. So this is what Polygon POS currently is, is a side chain. All you really need to know is a side chain is a separate blockchain that runs independent of Ethereum and is connected to Ethereum by a two-way bridge. So in order for it to actually be considered a side chain and not just another a <laughs> blockchain is it needs a bridge to kind of transfer funds from Ethereum mainnet to the side chain and back the other direction. There are other scaling solutions that companies like Polygon and Optimism Arbitrum have created. So Optimism, for example, released a optimistic rollup and this also has the same objective. It makes the transaction fees lower and the speed of the chain significantly faster. The way the optimistic rollups work in kind of one sentence is they batch transactions off chain 
and then submit them back to Ethereum mainnet. So rather than submitting them one by one by one by one, they batch them all together and then submit that back to Ethereum mainnet. And you might wonder, well, how does that work? Like, how do we know that those transactions are legit when they get posted back to Ethereum? The answer is as a participant in this network, you can submit fraud proofs as you can see here. So also verify transactions on Ethereum with fraud proofs. So essentially a week or two weeks after that batch of transactions comes into Ethereum mainnet, the participants in the network will get rewarded for proving fraudulent transactions wrong. So that in kind of one or two sentences, and this is very much simplified and I'm not the best person to uh, explain these things, but that's my understanding of optimistic rollups. Kind of side by side with the optimistic rollups are zero knowledge rollups or ZK rollups. And this is Polygon's, one of Polygon's latest releases is the Polygon ZK EVM rollup. So this is an example of a zero knowledge rollup that is Ethereum virtual machine or EVM compatible which we'll get into what that means in a second. Essentially, the way that zero knowledge rollups differ from optimistic ones is that you don't rely on that process of, you know, people submitting fraud proofs to prove bad actors wrong and maintain the integrity of the network. You can actually just cryptographically prove that a batch of transactions is correct and then say, here's the result of that batch. Here's the state of the chain afterwards that transaction data all gets posted to Ethereum mainnet. So there's no room to kind of post bad transactions or fraudulent transactions that actually gets cryptographically proven and sent back to Ethereum. So that is very much a oversimplified history of scaling solutions on Ethereum. And I just wanna keep this video light so I know I may have got things wrong or missed out on some context on things. I just wanted to keep this video short and light and give you an introduction of these historical innovations to improve the scalability of Ethereum. The reason any of this information matters is because it's kind of self-explanatory when you compare a Validium to a sidechain and a rollup now. If you have that background information, it's becomes kind of obvious why a Validium that is EVM compatible and uses zero knowledge proofs is superior and is an upgrade to what Polygon POS is in its current state. So Polygon POS was made to be more scalable and sacrifice the security aspect of that scalability trilemma. What becoming a Validium does is you achieve that same improvement in scalability as we saw kind of earlier in this document here we can achieve you know, upwards of 9,000 transactions per second, which is a huge, huge improvement on Ethereum mainnet. So we get a massive increase in scalability and we also get an increase when compared to a sidechain in security. And you can see here in this sentence, it says the existence of validity proofs, which is where zero knowledge comes into this. We're using zero knowledge proofs to create these validity proofs. Validiums, grant higher security guarantees than other pure off-chain scaling solutions, including sidechains. So we get increased scalability and we also get increased security when compared to a sidechain. So it's kind of a no-brainer at that point when you compare, well, do I want scalable and secure or do I want a sidechain which is scalable but less secure? So it is more scalable and more secure than its current state. Then the question is like, why did Polygon even make a sidechain? Why didn't they just make a Validium if it's just objectively better in, in, in this simplification here, right? The reason is is typically with Validiums, they are not EVM compatible. So if we jump into this Validium and EVM compatibility, you can see here, this first sentence says, like ZK rollups, which some of them are not EVM compatible, as we know, Polygon also recently made an EVM compatible zero knowledge rollup. Validiums are mostly suited to simple applications like token swaps and payments. This means all of the tools that as if you're a developer watching this video, you might be familiar with like Solidity to create smart contracts, the deployment tools that you use to deploy smart contracts, all of the stuff that developers as well as users are familiar with is not going to work typically with Validiums, right? I say typically because I'm about to explain why uh, EVM compatibility is important here. You can see 
Previously, you would make a massive sacrifice where you would need specialized sets of tools to create and deploy your smart contracts. You would expect users to use specialized tools like wallets to interact with anything deployed to your chain when you use the Validium because it doesn't have that Ethereum virtual machine or EVM compatibility. So that was a huge trade-off in the past for making Validiums. You would get the increase in security and have the nice scalability, but it comes at a cost. You have these huge expectations of both developers to create dApps. The knowledge is not transferable between your Validium and other EVM chains, and users would have to have these kind of unique um, wallets and ways of interacting with your chain specifically. However, Here's the big reveal. The Validium that Polygon is making is EVM compatible. So that's why it's kind of a no brainer here. It's like, oh, well, if I'm getting better results from the comparison to a side chain and I get all of the existing users and all of the existing developers that can easily deploy to this chain, which is really important to Polygon, then it's kind of obvious to make the choice to upgrade from a um, sidechain to an EVM compatible Validium. So now we can kind of put the different pieces of the puzzle together in the ZK EVM Validium name that Polygon is proposing to upgrade their sidechain to. The ZK is using zero knowledge proofs to create the uh, validity proofs to actually verify the correctness of the program execution as I'm reading in this bottom paragraph here. EVM means it's EVM compatible so you get the benefit of all of the existing tooling, the developer community, the user community, and there's really no public facing change for the people who are actually building dApps on top of the blockchain, right? And the same goes for the kind of validators of the network, right? It's just going to be a software upgrade to actually involve themselves in this new upgraded version of the network. So this is a huge, huge vital piece of the puzzle here is that it's EVM compatible because it means you get all of the existing community and it's not uh, kind of specialized skills just to deploy or interact with your chain. Then the third part of that now is what we've explored is the Validium. The Validium is comparatively more secure than the side chains because of the existence of validity proofs. So it's more secure than the side chain. It gets the same benefits of the scalability compared to Ethereum as you would expect from the Polygon POS sidechain, keeping the transaction fees low and keeping the throughput high. So hopefully it makes sense now why Polygon POS upgrading to a EVM compatible Validium is an upgrade compared to its current state as a sidechain. One last thing I wanted to talk about is why I talked about rollups in the kind of previous section of history of scaling innovations to Ethereum. Rollups are interesting because Polygon also released a ZK EVM rollup just a couple of months ago, right? So what's the difference? Why is Polygon creating this upgrade of POS to ZK EVM Validium if they already have the ZK rollup? The answer to that is there's already the kind of massive brands and community on Polygon POS. So there's still a lot of desire to build on this chain. So it's kind of bringing the Polygon POS up to par with the ZK EVM rollup. So they're going to coexist as two kind of different chains. The Polygon POS is a ZK EVM Validium, Polygon ZK EVM rollup, is as the name suggests, a ZK EVM rollup. So the difference is one's a Validium, one is a rollup. The only real difference between the two is that a Validium, as we kind of discussed, does not post the transaction data back to Ethereum. So you're relying on Polygon POS to give you that data. And the kind of validators are required to attest to that data availability in the Validium. So all you need to know is Validium doesn't post transaction data back to Ethereum, whereas the ZK EVM rollup does post the transaction data back. And this comes with two differences. Since it posts the transaction data back, the rollup puts more strain on Ethereum. That means it's less scalable because that data is going all back to Ethereum and it is more secure because that data is available on Ethereum. So compared to the Validium, the ZK EVM rollup is more secure 
and less scalable. So this will be suitable for applications like, um, you know, apps that require high security like DeFi applications. Validium is therefore more scalable and less secure because the transaction data is not being sent to Ethereum. So it puts less strain on Ethereum, but because of that, it's not available on Ethereum. Hopefully that makes sense. So the Validium is intended for kind of uh, high transaction throughput requirements for apps like Lens Protocol, if you're building social apps, or for gaming applications where, you know, you wanna be making a lot of transactions and the low gas fee is a requirement for your application. So hopefully that clarifies what the you know, why did I even talk about rollups? What the difference is between the ZK EVM rollup that Polygon just released and what this Polygon POS ZK EVM Validium upgrade means and how it compares to the rollup. So if you enjoyed this video, I try my best to kind of consolidate a lot of information into this short 10, 15 minute video. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. It can be kind of intimidating seeing these announcements with these scary words that, you know, even I saw it and was like, what on earth does that mean? And I spent the past couple of days trying to research it and make this educational content for you. So if you did get value out of it, please help me out in the algorithm, like the video so it gets shown to more people like yourself really helps me out and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.